Translation The Second Level Iman And it has seventy and odd branches. The highest of them is the saying that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. That is, La ilaha illallah. The lowest of them is removal of that which is harmful from the path and a sense of shame that is al haya is a branch of Iman. Its pillars are six. To truly believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His messengers, the last day and that you truly believe in pre-decree that is Al-Qadr. It's good and it's evil. The proof for these six pillars is the saying of Allah, the Most High. Surah Al-Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 177 It is not righteousness that you turn your faces to the east or the west, but rather righteousness is the righteousness of those who truly believe in Allah and the last day and the angels and the books and the prophets. The proof for pre-decree is the saying of Allah the Most High, Surah Al-Kamar, Chapter 54, Verse 49. We have created all things in accordance with the pre-decreed measure. Now we come to the second level of the second principle of Islam. The second level is Iman. Iman in the Arabic language means attestation, belief, that is at-tasdeek. And in the Sharia, it means certain faith, faith in the heart, speech of the tongue and action of the parts of the body. And it has 70 odd branches. Odd branches means an unstated number between 3 and 9. And it also means parts. Then the text says the highest of them is the saying that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, that is La ilaha illallah. And the lowest of them is removal of that which is harmful. This means removal of rocks and thorns, scrap and rubbish and that which gives off an offensive smell and all that causes harm to those who pass by. Then the text tells us that another branch of this Iman is Al-Haya. This is a sense of shame. This is something which is experienced when one is embarrassed and prevents a person from doing that which is contrary to good manners. Then the way in which the words of the author that Iman consists of 70 and odd branches is harmonized with the fact that Iman has six pillars, is to say, Iman, which is one's creed and belief, that is Aqidah, has six fundamentals. These are what are mentioned in the Hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, when he asked Prophet wasallam about Iman and he replied, Iman is that you truly believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, the last day and that you truly believe in pre-decree that is Al-Qadr, the good and the evil of it. This is reported by Bukhari Hadith number 47 and Muslim Hadith number 1. As for the Iman which covers actions and their various types and different kinds, then it has 70 and odd branches. Therefore, Allah the Most High called the prayer that is Salat Iman in His saying. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 143. And Allah will not cause your Iman, this means your prayer, to be lost and go unrewarded. The scholars of Tafsir say that it means that your prayers towards Jerusalem, since before the Companions were commanded to turn to, towards the Kaaba. They used to pray towards Jerusalem. Iman has six pillars and the first pillar is Iman in Allah. Iman in Allah comprises four matters. Number one, belief in the existence of Allah the Most High. The existence of Allah the Most High is proven by 
Number one, natural disposition. Number two, intellect. Number three, revelation. And number four, what is experienced and perceived. Now the first one, that is natural disposition. As for the proof of natural disposition of his existence, then every created being is created upon the natural disposition of belief in its creator without any previous thought or education. No one turns away from this natural disposition except when his heart is taken over by that which will turn him away from it. As he وسلم, said, Every child is born upon the natural disposition that is Al-Fitra. Then his parents change him into a Jew or a Christian or a Magian. Reported by Bukhari, Hadith number 467. Then number two, the intellect. As for the proof of the intellect that is Al-Aql for the existence of Allah the Most High, it is due to the fact that all these created things, the earlier ones and the later ones, must have a creator who brought them into being, since it is not possible for any being to create itself, nor that it should just appear by chance without a cause. It is not possible for anything to bring itself into existence, since something cannot create itself. This is because before its existence it did not exist so how could it be a creator nor is it possible that it just appeared by chance without a cause this is because everything coming into existence must have someone that brought it into existence furthermore this astounding arrangement and harmonious order and the Coherence between the cause and their effects and between all that exists makes it impossible that it all came into existence randomly and without a cause. When there is something which comes about randomly having no order at the root of its existence, then how can it exist and remain in a state of order and arrangement and how can it develop in such a state? Since it is not possible that the creation brought itself into existence, nor that it came into being randomly and without a cause, then it has to be the case that it has one who brought it into being and he is Allah, the Lord of all creation. Allah the Most High mentions this intellectual proof and this decisive and conclusive argument he, the Most High, says, Surah At-Tur, Chapter 52, Verse 35. <laughs> Were they created by nothing or did they create themselves? Which means that they did not come into being without a creator and they did not create themselves. So it is established for certain that their creator is Allah, the exalted and the most high. This is why when Jubair ibn Muttam who heard Allah's messenger وسلم, recite Surah At-Tur until the ayah, Surah At-Tur, chapter 52, verse 35 to 38. were they created by nothing or did they create themselves or did they create the heavens and the earth? Nay, they have no certainty or do they have possession of the treasures of your Lord or are they the ones having power and control over the affairs? Jubair was a mushrik at the time. He said afterwards, my heart almost flew 
and this was when iman first settled in my heart this is reported by bukhari hadith number 377 let us also give an example which will make this clear if a person told you about a decorated palace surrounded by gardens through which rivers flowed and that it was filled with carpets and couches and decorated with all sorts of adornments and treasures then he said to you that this palace and all within is brought itself into existence or that it just suddenly appeared like that without any cause or creator straight away you would deny that and declare that he was lying and you would take his word to be foolish so can it then be permissible to say that this vast creation containing the earth and its sky its stars and all within it and its amazing astounding order brought itself into being or that it just appeared without anyone creating it then number 3 as for the proof of revelation for the existence of allah the most high then all of the revealed books state that and also the rulings and laws sent down in revelation which ensure the well-being of the creation are a proof that they are from a wise lord who knows everything that benefits his creation also the information about the creation contained in the revelation which is testified to by reality proves that it comes from a lord who is fully capable of creating and bringing about whatever he informed of number 4 as for the proof contained in what is experienced and perceived for the existence of allah then that is from two angles a we hear and see those who supplicate being answered and those in distress who call upon him being relieved to such an extent that it is a certain proof of his existence allah the most high says surah al anbiya chapter 21 verse 76 wa nuhan idh nada min qabl fastajabna lah fanjaynahu wa ahlahu min al karb al azim and remember nuh when he called upon allah to destroy his unbelieving folk who obstinately denied and rejected allah so allah answered his supplication and saved him and the believers from his family allah the most high says surah anfal chapter 8 verse 9 id tastaghizun rabbakum fastajaba lakum when you sought aid and deliverance of your lord and he responded to you it is reported from anas ibn malik radhiyallahu anhu that a bedouin arab entered the mosque on the day of juma while the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was delivering the khutbah and said o messenger of allah property is being destroyed the dependents have become hungry so supplicate to allah for us so he raised up his hands and supplicated so clouds like mountains appeared and he did not come down from his member before i saw rain flowing down his beard then on the succeeding juma at that same bedouin or someone else stood and said o messenger of allah the houses are collapsing and wealth is being flooded so supplicate to allah for us so he raised his hands and said o allah around us and not upon us and he did not point to any direction except that it cleared this is narrated by bukhari hadith number 55 it has been something always witnessed till this day that those who call upon allah the most high sincerely and fulfill the conditions for the supplication to be answered are indeed responded to b the clear signs known as miracles brought by the prophets and seen by the people or heard of by them are a decisive proof for the one who sent them allah the most high this is because they were things outside the realm of human ability and were done by allah the most high to aid and help his messengers 
An example is the sign given to Musa alayhi salam when Allah the Most High commanded him to strike the sea with a staff. So he struck it at, and twelve separate dry pathways were opened through it. The water being like mountains between them, Allah the Most High says, Surah Ashura, chapter 26, verse 63. فأوحينا إلى موسى أن يضرب بعصاك البحر فانفلق فكان كل فرق كالطود العظيم. Then we inspired Musa, strike the ocean with your staff, and it split into separate parts, and each part was like a huge mountain. A second example was a sign given to Isa alayhi salam that he used to give life to the dead and bring them out of their graves by permission of Allah. Allah the Most High said about him, Surah Ali Imran, Chapter 3, Verse 49, And I revive the dead by Allah's permission. Then Surah Al-Maida, Chapter 5, Verse 110, And when you brought forth the dead by my permission. A third example that which was given to Muhammad وسلم, when Quraysh asked for a sign, so he pointed to the moon and it split into two and that was seen by the people. Concerning this, Allah the Most High says, Surah Al-Kamar, chapter 54, verse 1 and chapter 2. The hour has drawn near and the moon has been split. And if the mushriks see a sign proving the truth of the prophethood of Muhammad, وسلم, they turn away from it and say, This is magic which will pass away. So these are signs which were seen and perceived, which Allah the Most High caused to occur as supporting proof and assistance for His messengers. And they are decisive proofs of His existence. Number two, Iman in His Lordship, that is Arububiya. That is, that he alone is the Lord, having no sharer in that, nor any helper. So the Lord, our Rabb, is the one who creates, is the sovereign king, and the command is his. So there is no creator except Allah, nor any sovereign Lord except him, and there is no command except for him. Allah, the Most High, says, Surah Al-Araf, Chapter 7, Verse 54, Certainly, creation and the command are His. Then it says in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse 13. That is Allah your Lord, who alone has the right to worship. He it is who has complete sovereignty and those whom you worship besides him do not even possess and control the amount of the thin membrane covering a date stone. It is not known that anyone from the creation denied the lordship of Allah, the one free of all imperfections, except one who did so out of arrogance and not out of belief in what he said. This was the case with Pharaoh when he said to his people, Surah An-Naziyat, chapter 79, verse 24. I am your highest Lord. Then Surah Al-Qasas, chapter 28, verse 38. O nobles, I know no other God for you besides me. He did not say this out of belief. Allah, 
the most high says in surah an-naml chapter 27 verse 14 wa jahadu biha wa istayqanatha anfusuhum dhulman wa uluwa they rejected allah's clear signs proving what musa called to yet in their hearts they knew that they were true and from allah and they did so due to their transgression and arrogance then musa said to pharaoh as we are told by allah chapter al isra chapter 17 verse 102 Musa said to Pharaoh, "You know for certain that these signs were not sent down except by the Lord of the heavens and the earth, and that they are clear proofs of the truth of what I call you to, and that I am Allah's messenger. But I think that you, O Pharaoh, are one accursed and deprived of good." Therefore the mushriks used to affirm the lordship of Allah the most high even though they worshiped others along with him Allah the most high says Surah Al-Mu'minun chapter 23 verse 84 to 89 قل لمن الارض ومن فيها ان كنتم تعلمون سيقولون لله قل افلا تذكرون قل من رب السماوات السبع ورب العرش العظيم سيقولون لله قل افلا تتقون قل من بيده ملكوت كل شيء وهو يجير ولا يجار عليه ان كنتم تعلمون سيقولون لله قل فانا تسحرون سي او محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم تو دوز مشركس to whom belongs the sovereignty of the earth and all the creation upon it if it is that you know they will say it is allah's then say will you not then realize that he it is who alone deserves all worship say to them o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the lord of the seven heavens and the tremendous throne which extends over them all they will say that it is all for allah say will you not then fear his punishment for your worship of others besides him say in whose hand is the dominion and control of everything and who protects and none can protect against his punishment if it is that you know they will say it is for allah say then how is it that you are turned away from acceptance of the truth to falsehood and to the worship of others along with allah then it says in surah az-zukhruf chapter 43 verse 9 wala in sa'altahum man khalaqa as-samawati wal arda la yaqulunna khalaqahunna al-aziz al-alim and if you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were to ask those mushriks from your people who created the heavens and the earth they will say it is allah the mighty and all knowing who created them then surah zukhruf chapter 43 verse 87 wala in sa'altahum man khalaqahum la yaqulun allah fa anna yu'fakun and if you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were to ask those from your people who worship others along with allah who created them they will say Allah created us then have they turned away from the worship of the one who created them the command of the lord the one free of all perfections covers the creational command and the legislative command so just as he arranges and controls the creation 
and he decrees for it whatever he wishes according to his wisdom, then likewise he is the sovereign judge therein who lays down and prescribes the acts of worship and the judgments for social affairs and dealings also according to his wisdom. So whoever takes someone else along with Allah the Most High to prescribe and legislate with regard to acts of worship or as a sovereign or judge in transactions and social affairs, then he has committed shirk in that and has not realized Iman. Number three, Iman in Allah's sole right to worship, that is Al-Uluhiya. That is that he alone is the one who has the right to be worshipped and no share of any worship is to be directed to anyone besides him. al ila means that which is worshipped with love and veneration. Allah the Most High says, Surah Al-Baqarah, Chapter 2, Verse 163. <laughs> And the God alone who has the right to be worshipped is a single God. So do not worship anything besides Him, nor associate anything in worship with Him, the most merciful, the bestower of mercy. Then it says in Surah Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 18, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illa huwa wal malaikatu wa ulul ilmi qa'iman bil qistu. Allah bears witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Him. And likewise, the angels and the people of knowledge bear witness. He who maintains justice, none has the right to be worshipped but Him, the Almighty, the All-Wise. Everything which is taken as God to be worshipped besides Him is a false and a futile object of worship. Allah, the Most High, says, Surah Hajj, chapter 22, verse 62. That is because Allah is the true God, deserving all worship. There is none like Him, no sharer and no rival. And those gods which the mushriks invoke besides Him are futile and false and not able to create anything. Rather, they are themselves created things. And Allah, it is who is the most high above everything, the most great. Furthermore, we are told, about the gods, the fact that they are called gods in no way gives them the right to be worshipped. The Mushrikeen had given these names Lat, Uzza and Manat to their gods. Concerning them, Allah the Most High says, Surah An-Najm, Chapter 53, Verse 23. إِنْ هِيَ إِلَّا أَسْمَاءٌ سَمَّيْتُمُوهَا أَنْتُمْ وَآبَاؤُكُمْ مَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ Rather, these idols are mere names which you mushriks and your forefathers have invented. Allah has sent down no proof for that. Then it says, in Surah Al-Araf, chapter 7, verse 71. Do you dispute with me about mere idols, which you and your fathers have given names to? things which can neither bring harm nor benefit and Allah has given no proof or excuse for them to be worshipped. He says that Yusuf said to his two companions in the prison, Surah Yusuf, chapter 12, verse 39 and 40. Asma'an sammaytumuha antum wa abaukum 
ما انزل الله بها من سلطان is it better that you worship many different lords or that you worship only allah the one who subdues and has full power over everything you do not worship besides allah except idols which you call gods which you and your forefathers gave names to for which allah has sent down no authority therefore the messengers used to say to their people surah al araf chapter 7 verse 59 Worship Allah alone there is none besides him deserving and having the right to your worship but the mushriks refused this and worshiped other gods along with Allah the one free of all imperfections and the most high seeking aid from them and calling upon them to deliver and rescue them Allah the most high has exposed the futility of the mushriks worshiping these gods with two clear intellectual proofs number 1 these gods which they worship do not possess any attributes of divinity rather they are created beings which cannot create nor can they bring any benefit to those who worship them nor can they keep any harm away from them nor do they have any power over their life or death nor do they own and control anything in the heavens nor have any share in that allah the most high says surah al furqan chapter 25 verse 3 and they have taken idols as gods which they worship things which do not create anything and are themselves created and which do not possess the power to bring about benefit for themselves nor to keep away harm nor do they have the power to cause death nor to give life nor to resurrect the dead then it says in surah saba chapter 34 verse 22 and 23 وَلِدَعُ الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ لَا يَمْلِكُونَ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَلَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا لَهُمْ فِيهِمَا مِنْ شِرْكٍ وَمَا لَهُ مِنْهُمْ مِنْ ظَهِيرٍ وَلَا تَنْفَعُ الشَّفَاعَةُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا لِمَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the mushriks call upon those whom you claim as associates with allah and request them to bring blessings to you and remove harm and when they are unable to do that then know that you have been confounded they do not possess an atom's weight of good or evil harm or benefit in the heavens or the earth nor do they have any share in that nor is there any helper for him from who from those whom they call upon besides him nor can the intercession of any one benefit except that he intercedes for one whom allah permits it for then it says in surah al araf chapter 7 verse 191 and 192 أَيُشْرِكُونَ مَا لَا يَخْلُقُ شَيْئًا وَهُمْ يُخْلَقُونَ وَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ لَهُمْ نَصْرًا وَلَا أَنفُسَهُمْ يَنصُرُونَ Do they associate in worship along with Allah those who create nothing and are themselves created by Allah they are unable to help them and cannot help themselves So this being the state of these gods then to worship them is the greatest folly and is totally futile. The second argument those mushriks used to affirm that Allah the most high alone is the lord and the creator and uh, 
that in his hand is the control of everything and that he protects and none can protect from him so this necessitates that they should single him out with all worship just as they have singled him out by affirming all lordship for him allah the most high says surah al baqarah chapter 2 verse 21 and 22 ya ayyuhan nas a'budu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum wal ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqun alladhi ja'ala lakum al ard firashan was samaa'a bina'a wa anzala min as samaa'a O mankind, single out your Lord with all worship, He who created you and all those who came before you, so that you may be of those who seek to avoid Allah's punishment and anger, those whom Allah is pleased with. He who has made the earth a resting place for you and has made the sky a canopy and who sends down rain from the sky and brings out with it from the earth crops and fruits as provision for you so do not set up rivals with Allah in your worship while you know that you have no lord besides him then it says in surah zukhruf chapter 43 verse 87 wala in sa'altahum man khalaqahum la yaqulunna allah fa anna yu'fakun and if you o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were to ask those from your people who worship others along with allah who created them they will say allah created us then how have they turned away from the worship of the one who created them then it says in surah yunus chapter 10 verse 31 and 32 qul man yarzuqukum min as-samaa'i wal ardi am man yamliku as-sam'a wal absar وَمَن يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَن يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهُ فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمُ الْحَقُّ فَمَاذَا بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالُ فَأَنَّى تُصْرَفُونَ say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to those who associate others in worship along with allah who gives you provision from the heaven and the earth or who is it that grants you hearing and sight who brings out the living from the dead and brings out the dead from the living who controls the affairs then they will say allah then say Will you not then fear Allah's punishment for your worshipping along with him others who do not provide sustenance for you and who can neither harm nor benefit you rather the one who provides for you from the heavens and the earth grants you hearing and sight brings out the living from the dead and the dead from the living and controls the affairs is Allah your true lord about which there can be no doubt so besides the truth what is their except misguidance so how is it that you have turned away from the truth